Experts say that soaring electricity demand in the United States could potentially plunge many cities into darkness when we hit peak needs. Basically, when it gets hot and everyone turns on their air conditioners, you're going to get grids just collapsing. Here's the reason why. It's not what you'd think. You'd think it's all EVs. It's not really. Here's what's happening in America, and you guys really need to do something about this because you're going to have some problems very, very soon. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. It's great to see you. Vast areas of the United States are at huge risk of running short of power as electricity-hungry data centers. They're soaking up huge amounts of energy. But in addition to that, clean technology factories, battery factories that have just sprung up over the past 12 months to two years, and New EV factories are leaving utilities and regulators apparently grasping for credible plans to expand the nation's creaking power grid. Now, I've got a solution for them, but here's what the media are saying. They say that in Georgia, demand for industrial power is surging to record highs with a projection of new electricity use for the next decade, now 17 times what it was only recently. This is sounds crazy, but it's actually true. When you look at all the different plans for new factories that are going to pop up in Georgia, it makes a lot of sense. Arizona Public Service, the largest utility in that state, is struggling to keep up projecting. It will be out of transmission capacity before the end of the decade, unless there are some major upgrades. Northern Virginia needs the equivalent of several large nuclear power plants or just lots of solar farms and batteries, which I think would be a better idea, to serve all the new data centers planned and under construction. Texas, where electricity shortages are already routine on hot summer days, faces the same dilemma. Now, Texas does have some good strategies for this, though. For one, they have more wind power than any other state in America. Two, they have massive transmission line projects that have been just commissioned and are being built right now to solve this challenge. Three, they're installing enormous battery farms. So Texas, I believe, you guys are going to be all right. There's other states, though, not so sure. The soaring demand is touching off a scramble to try to squeeze more juice out of an aging power grid while pushing commercial customers to go to extraordinary lengths to lock down energy sources such as building their own power plants. When you look at the numbers, it's staggering, said Jason Shaw, chairman of the Georgia Public Service Commission, which regulates electricity. It makes you scratch your head. I wonder how we ended up in this situation. How were the projections this far off? This has created a challenge like we have never seen before. Now, even though it sounds like EVs are going to be part of the problem or are part of the problem, they're actually not. In fact, they're pretty much the only solution to this. Electric cars is, are the only solution. That's what is going to save the American power grid. I'm going to explain exactly why and how that is in just a minute. Now, a major factor behind the skyrocketing demand for electricity is the rapid innovation in artificial intelligence, which is driving the construction of large warehouses of computing infrastructure that require exponentially more power than traditional data centers. AI is also part of a huge scale up of cloud computing. Technology firms like Amazon, Apple, Google, Meta, and Microsoft are scouring the United States for sites for new data centers, and many lesser known firms are also on the hunt. In other words, this is just happening all over the United States right now. The proliferation of crypto mining in which currencies like Bitcoin are transacted and minted is also driving data center growth. It is all putting new pressures on an overtaxed and overstressed antiquated grid. The network of transmission lines and power stations that move electricity around the country. Bottlenecks are forming, leaving both new generation of energy, particularly clean energy and large consumers facing growing wait times for hookups. The situation is sparking battles across the nation over who will pay for new power supplies, with regulators worrying that residential ratepayers could be stuck with the bill for costly upgrades. Basically, you're paying for the electricity use that a lot of these companies should be paying for themselves. It also threatens to stifle the transition to cleaner energy, as utility executives lobby to delay the retirement of fossil fuel plants 
and bring more online potentially. The power crunch imperils their ability to supply the energy that will be needed to charge the millions of electric cars and household appliances required to meet state and federal climate goals. And that may sound like um, it's scaremongering and EVs are the problem, but actually they're not. Here's the thing. There is plenty of times, plenty of times when the grid has too much energy. And I'm not just talking about a grid in one particular state. I'm talking about every single state in America. If you actually have a look at what happens in these grids, you'll find that during often peak times of power generation, that might mean 11, 12, 1 p.m. in the day, if you live in a state where there's a lot of solar, that might mean during the middle of the night, if you live in a state where there's a lot of wind, that might mean Depending on the state you're in, it will be different times of day. But at particular times of day, there's often too much energy. And that energy is pretty much wasted. If you have an EV, you can therefore charge your EV very, very cheaply, sometimes almost for free, as long as you charge it at the right time of day. Now, if you are charging using your, old, your own solar, even better. But then what we can do is use millions of electric cars to give the grid the energy it needs at the times that it needs. Now, the grid actually doesn't struggle for most periods of the day. It just has those peak points. That's when the grid struggles, right? Everyone comes home from work. The data centers are using all their extra power. Everyone comes home at five o'clock, six o'clock of the day. It's hot. Everyone turns on their air conditioners and all of a sudden the grid collapses. We saw this happen in Adelaide in Australia. Right, this was happening all the time. The grid was collapsing. Guess what? Elon Musk says to the Australian government, we'll fix your grid. Your grid's a nightmare. It's a mess. It's the worst grid in Australia. It was, no question. It was, it, I mean, it was blacking out constantly. And we're talking 41, 42 degrees Celsius. We're talking over hundred degrees Fahrenheit days where everyone's hot as hell. The grid's dying, right? What are you gonna do? You can't keep your frozen food cold. You can't keep your fridge cold. You're going to be in a situation where if you're old and you're frail, you're going to be in danger of possibly passing out, right? Anyway, the government laughed at him. They said it wouldn't work. He said, I'll build a battery. I promise you it'll work. Give us 100 days. We'll build it within 100 days. If it goes over time, you can have it for free. And well, what do you know? Tesla installed it. At the time, it was the biggest battery in the world. Now, the grid in South Australia is the best grid in Australia. You know why? Because that state has transitioned to renewable energy completely. At many times of the day, it runs almost entirely on solar and battery power. And it has actually some wind farms as well. Within the next two years, that grid will be 100% renewables without needing any hydro. It'll be the only large city in the world to, achieve, to have achieved that feat. This can be replicated in the United States. Keep in mind, in this particular city, at many times of the day, it's now free to charge your electric car. The reason because there is so much solar power here now that um, at certain times of the day, it's just sending too much power to the grid. So the solution is put all that power in your EV and then when the grid needs it, you can send it back to the grid. You make money and everyone wins. That's what America can do. In fact, that's what the whole world can do. Many experts believe that EVs are the solution and not the problem. Now, America's 2,700 data centers sapped more than 4% of the country's total, total electricity in 2022, according to the International Energy Agency. Its projections show that by 2026, they will consume 6%. Of course, by 2028, it will have risen again. Industry forecasts show the centers eating up a larger share of US electricity in the years that follow as demand from residential and smaller commercial facilities stays relatively flat thanks to steadily increasing efficiencies in appliances and heating and cooling systems. Data center operators are clamoring to hook up to regional electricity grids at the same time the Biden administration's industrial policy is luring companies to build factories en masse we're talking all kinds of new factories at a pace that has not been seen in decades. This includes manufacturers of clean tech, such as solar panels, electric car batteries, many other new gen products, even robotics factories. 
These are being enticed with lucrative federal incentives to try and combat the rise in China's manufacturing dominance in these areas. Biden is right. The US has to do this. It has no choice. Companies announced plans to build or expand more than 155 factories in this country during the first half of the Biden administration, according to the Electric Power Research Institute, a research and development organization. Not since the early 1990s has factory building accounted for such a large share of US construction spending, according to the group. Utility projections for the amount of power they will need over the next five years have nearly doubled and are expected to grow, according to a review of regulatory filings by the research firm Grid Strategies. In the past, companies tried to site their data centers in areas with major internet infrastructure, a large pool of tech talent and attractive government incentives. But these locations apparently are getting tapped out. Communities that had little connection to the computing industry now find themselves in the middle of a land rush with data center developers flooding their markets with requests for grid hookups. Officials in Columbus, Ohio, Altoona, Iowa, and Fort Wayne, Indiana are being aggressively courted by data center developers. But power supply in some of these second choice markets is running low, pushing developers even further out in some cases into cornfields, according to JLL, a commercial real estate firm that serves the tech industry. Grid Strategies warns in its report that there are real risks some regions may miss out on economic development opportunities because their grid can't keep up. Across the board, we are seeing power companies say, we don't know if we can handle this. We have to audit our system. We've never dealt with this kind of influx before, said Andy Sengross, Managing Director of Data Center Markets at JLL. Everyone is now chasing power. They are willing to look everywhere for it. We saw a quadrupling of land values in some parts of Columbus and a tripling in areas of Chicago, he said. It's not about the land. It's about access to power. So maybe if you're looking to invest in real estate, you can consider this. Some developers, he said, have had to sell the property they bought at inflated prices at a loss after utilities became overwhelmed by the rush for grid hookups. It's all happening at the same time. The energy transition is steering large numbers of Americans to rely on the power grid to fuel vehicles, heat pumps, inductive stoves, and all manner of other household appliances that previously ran on fossil fuels. Now, many of these homes, fortunately, are installing solar at the fastest pace we've ever seen in history. And that is most certainly going to help the grid. The more people that install solar and have EVs where their solar charges their electric car, and then possibly they sell electricity from that EV back into the grid, well, this actually helps the grid. However, a huge amount of clean energy is also needed to create the green hydrogen championed by the White House. As developers are rushing to build plants that can produce the powerful zero emissions fuel lured by federal subsidies. Planners are increasingly concerned that the grid won't be green enough or powerful enough to meet these demands. Already soaring power consumption is delaying coal power plant closures in Kansas, Nebraska, Wisconsin, and South Carolina. In Georgia, the state's major power company, Georgia Power, stunned regulators when it revealed recently how wildly off its projections were, pointing to data centers as being the main problem. The demand has Georgia officials rethinking the state's policy of offering incentives to lure computing operations, which generates few jobs, but can boost community budgets through the hefty property taxes that they pay. The top leaders of Georgia's House and Senate, both Republicans, are championing a pause in data center incentives. Georgia regulators, however, are are exploring how to protect ratepayers while ensuring there is enough power to meet the needs of the state's most prized new tenants, clean technology companies, which they clearly believe are more important to America than data centers. Factories supplying the electric vehicle and green energy markets have been rushing to locate to Georgia 
in large part because of promises on cheap, reliable electricity. When the data center industry began looking for new hubs, Atlanta was like, bring it on, said Pat Lynch, who leads the data center solutions team at real estate giant CBRE. Now Georgia Power is warning of limitations. Utility shortages in the face of these data center demands are happening in almost every market. A similar dynamic is playing out in a very different region, the Pacific Northwest. In Oregon, Portland General Electricity recently doubled its forecast for new electricity demand over the next five years, citing data centers and rapid industrial growth as the drivers. That power crunch threw a wrench into the plans of Michael Halliburta and Armand Khalili, long-time data center developers whose largest project involves converting a mothballed tile factory in the Portland area. The two were under the impression only a couple of months ago that they would have no problem getting the electricity they needed to run the place. Then the power company alerted them that it would need to do a line and load study to issue to assess whether it could supply the facility with 60 megawatts of electricity, roughly the amount needed to power 45,000 homes. Now you might be thinking, well, why not go off grid? That's exactly what a lot of mining companies and mines are doing all around the world. They're building their own renewable energy. All they're just doing is building solar power plants and putting wind turbines and batteries in they don't have to worry about the grid at all. They don't even use the grid. But those are locations where there's often lots of empty, arid land nearby that's not being used. Not so much the case like that in America. The Portland project, though, Halliburta and Khalili are developing, will now be powered in large part off the grid. High-tech fuel cells that convert natural gas into low emissions electricity, they say, are going to be used. The technology will be supplemented by whatever power can be secured from the grid. The partners decided that on their next project in South Texas, they're not going to take their chances with the grid at all. Instead, they will drill thousands of feet into the ground to use geothermal energy. Halliburta sees the growth as good for the country and the economy. And I think he's right. He says, but no one took into consideration where this is all going. In the next couple of years, unless there is a real focus on expanding the grid and making it more robust, we're going to see opportunities fall by the wayside because we can't get power to where it's needed. Companies are increasingly turning to off-the-grid experiments as their frustration with a logjam in the nation's traditional electricity network mounts. Microsoft and Google are among the firms hoping that energy-intensive industrial operations can ultimately be powered by small nuclear power plants on site. With Microsoft even putting artificial intelligence to work, trying to streamline the burdensome process of getting plants approved. Microsoft has also inked a deal to buy power from a company trying to develop zero emissions fusion power. But going off the grid brings its own big regulatory and land acquisition challenges. The type of nuclear power plants envisioned, for example, are not yet operational in the United States. Fusion power doesn't yet commercially exist. The big technology companies are also exploring ways that artificial intelligence can make the grid operate more efficiently. And they're developing platforms that during times of peak power demand can shift compute tasks and their associated energy consumption to the times and places where carbon-free energy from wind and solar and batteries is available on the grid. That's what Google says anyway. But meeting both their zero emissions pledges and their AI innovation ambitions is becoming increasingly complicated as the energy needs of their data centers grow. These problems are not going to go away said the CEO of Layer 9 Data Centers, a US company that is looking to avoid the logjam by building their data centers in Mexico. Data centers are going to have to become more efficient. We need to be using more clean sources of efficient energy, like nuclear, he says. 
Obviously, there's a bit of a lack of understanding of the benefits of solar, wind, and batteries at these big tech companies, unfortunately. Officials at Equinix, one of the world's largest data center companies, said they have been experimenting with fuel cells as backup power. But they remain hopeful they can keep the power grid as their main source of electricity for new projects. The logjam is pushing officials overseeing the clean energy transition at some of the nation's largest airports to look beyond the grid. The amount of energy they need to charge fleets of electric rental vehicles and ground maintenance trucks alone is immense. An analysis shows electricity demand doubling by 2030 at both the Denver and Minneapolis airports. By 2040, they will need more than triple the electricity they are using now, according to the study commissioned by car rental giant Enterprise, Excel Energy and Jacobs, a consulting firm. Utilities are not going to be able to move quickly enough to provide all this capacity, said Christine Wadig, the president of transportation at Alpha Structure, which designs and operates clean energy projects. The infrastructure is not there. Different solutions are needed. Airports, she said, are looking at dramatically expanding the use of clean power microgrids that they can build on site. The Biden administration has made easing the grid bottleneck a priority. But it is a politically fraught process and federal powers are limited in states. Building the transmission lines and transfer stations needed involves huge land acquisitions in many cases, exhaustive environmental reviews and negotiations to determine who should pay what costs. The process runs through state regulatory agencies and fights between states over who gets stuck with the bill and whose power lines should go routinely sink and delay proposed projects. The amount of new transmission lines installed in the United States has dropped sharply since 2013, when 4,000 miles were added to the grid. Now the nation struggles to bring online even 1,000 new miles per year. The slowdown has serious consequences, not just for companies, but for the climate as well. A group of scientists led by Princeton University professor Jesse Jenkins warned in a report that by 2030, the United States risking losing out on 80% of potential emissions reductions from President Biden's signature climate law, the Inflation Reduction Act, if the pace of transmission construction does not pick up dramatically. And now, while the proliferation of data centers puts more pressure on states to approve new transmission lines, it also complicates the task. Officials in Maryland, for example, are protesting a plan for $5.2 billion in infrastructure that would transmit proven power to huge data centers in Loudoun County, the Maryland Office of the People's Council, a government agency that advocates for ratepayers called Grid Operator PJM's plan fundamentally unfair, arguing it could leave Maryland utility customers paying for power transmission to data centers that Virginia aggressively courted and is leveraging for a windfall in tax revenue. Tensions over who gets power from the grid and how it gets to them are only going to intensify as the supply becomes scarcer. In Texas, a dramatic increase in data centers for crypto mining is touching off a debate over whether they are a costly drain on an overtaxed grid. For this reason, a lot of people believe that Bitcoin it's not something that should be supported by Tesla. An analysis of by the consulting firm Wood McKenzie found that the energy needed by crypto operations aiming to link to the grid would equal a quarter of the electricity used in the state at peak demand. Unlike data centers operated by big tech companies such as Google and Meta, crypto miners generally don't build renewable energy projects with the aim of supplying enough zero emissions energy to the grid to cover their operations. The result, said Ben Hertz Shargle, who authored the Wood McKenzie analysis, is that crypto's drain on the grid threatens to inhibit the ability of Texas to power other energy hungry operations that could drive innovation and economic growth, such as Tesla's Gigafactory in Austin, Texas, and other factories that produce zero emissions green hydrogen fuel or industrial charging depots that enable electrification of truck and bus fleets. But after decades in which power was readily available, regulators and utility executives across the United States generally are not empowered to prioritize which projects get connected. 
it is first come, first served, and the line is growing longer. To answer the call, some states have passed laws to protect crypto's mining access to huge amounts of power. Lawmakers need to think about this, said Hertz Schagel, about the increasingly limited supply of power to things that, well, are a bit more necessary than crypto mining. There is a risk that strategic industries they want in their states are going to have a challenging time setting up in those places. Now, we've got more than $150 billion being invested into clean energy projects, in particular to electric car manufacturing, to EV battery factory sites in the United States. And also, massive amounts of money being poured into solar, wind, and battery storage. But if we're directing huge amounts of power to projects like crypto mining and having new data centers, well, this could be a big problem for a lot of those new clean energy projects, which, to be honest, have to be built. And the reason is this. China controls the electric car market worldwide. If the US does not build new factories to build new electric cars, then it will lose the automotive industry. And that is crucial to America's GDP. Without the automotive industry, America would lose more than 30% of its manufacturing production. Now, either way, no matter how you see this, the reality is America is running out of power. And all of this is going to come to a head within the next few years. Many grids will be overloaded. Many of them just won't be able to keep up. Now, a lot of this video was provided by Evan Helper and his article about explosive demand and America is running out of power. This article was published in the Washington Post in March of 2024. Thanks for watching.